in the name of the Lord. Peace, Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, put their cloaks on them, and he sat there. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Blessed be God, Father, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, put their cloaks on them, and he sat there. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let, him give, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and prayers. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be God's, be God's kingdom, kingdom, now, now and, forever. and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, whose most dear Son went up not to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we'll say the Kyrie together. <coughs> Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is one of those wonderful prophecies from the book of the prophet Isaiah, reading in chapter 50. The Lord God has given me 
the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he awakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The psalm is printed in your bulletin. It is Psalm 31, and we'll be reading verses 9 to 16. Let's read them together. Have, Have mercy, mercy on me, me O Lord, Lord, for I am in God. trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors. A dismay, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When, when they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as, but as for me, me I have trusted in you, O oh Lord. I have said, you are, you my, are God. my God. My, my times God are in your hand. hand. Rescue, Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. The epistle is from the second chapter of the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in the city of Philippi, called the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will be reading the Passion Gospel, and 
a number of the people here with me will be taking some of the voices. The Passion, according to Mark, this is Mark chapter 15, verses 1 to 39. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He you answered say so. him, You say so. Then the, chief, then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no other reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then, what do you wish me to do with the man you call the King of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, Wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, the king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, uh -huh. you, you who would destroy, destroy the temple and build it in three days, days. Save, save yourself, yourself and come down and from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. others. He cannot save, save himself. himself. 
Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lebastakartani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling, he's calling for Elijah. Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave, him, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, Wait. let us see, see whether Elijah will come, come to take him out. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this, this man is God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Each year after hearing the Passion Gospel, it occurs to me that there should not be a sermon following that. It speaks for itself. And maybe the best thing we could do is just leave now and think about what we just read and said and heard until it it's time to come back here for the Good Friday vigil. But words are, are necessary. And so I will say just a few about what we just heard. Palm Sunday begins seeming to be about victory, the triumphant entry of, Jeruz of Jesus into Jerusalem was much like a conquering ruler's victory parade where the ruler came back into the capital city and the people greeted him with great excitement because he was bringing to them victory and treasures from conquered places and captives who would be slaves or for whom ransom would be paid and everybody would, ben would benefit. And then from there it goes to defeat with the crucifixion. And in such a short time. And we might want to think that we saw the best and the worst in this compressed little bit of time. The celebration of Jesus' arrival and the recognition of it 
to a short time later when the same crowd turned on him and shouted, crucify him. But perhaps what we're really seeing is the worst of humanity in both places. What did the crowd on Palm Sunday want and expect? It wasn't what we've come to understand that Jesus had in store for us. They thought there was something in it for them. They thought that Jesus was going to make Jerusalem great again, and they would regain their former glory, or their former imagined glory, and everything would be good for them. But Jesus didn't come so that we could have our former glory, or everything should be great. Jesus came so that we could be connected to God and to himself, that, sh that we could be right with God. And so the crowd missed it both times. They missed understanding who the king was who came to be celebrated by them, and they missed understanding what happened when they called for his crucifixion. Now in the week to come, we're going to continue to take ourselves through this reenactment of Jesus' last week. And I hope that we will slow down some of our busyness, at least for a time, and think about what this means for us and how we apply it to our own life. In the week to come, there will be three significant days. The first, Good Friday, when Jesus was executed. The second, Holy Saturday, when nothing happens much at all. And the third, Easter Sunday, when Jesus is restored to life. And our lives are like that, too. So please, as we think about the week to come, if we think of nothing else, think of this. Most of our lives, we have some brief periods of suffering and pain. They usually don't last terribly long, although there are, of course, exceptions. And then there is the time in the middle, Holy Saturday, when we are in between the good and the great, and we're waiting, and nothing much happens at all. And then comes new life. So think about what Holy Week means for us, and where are each of us in in this progression. Some of us are suffering. It truly is Good Friday for us. Many of us are waiting. It's Holy Saturday for us. Nothing much is perhaps happening, and we're waiting for something to change. And for others, there's the joy of, of new life, and of rediscovering the life that was there all along. And I hope for all of us that it will be the third thing, that for all of us that we will rediscover the life and the joy that comes from God's love for us and our love for each other, and that we will realize that it was there all the time. So let's go from the, the pain of Good Friday to the waiting of Holy Saturday till we come back here in a week and celebrate the love that God has for all of us.
Please join me as we turn to the Nicene Creed, which we'll find on page 9 of our bulletins, and say this together. Uh, if you're following in your prayer book, that's page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 1, as found in your bulletin or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 385. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our diocesan Bishop Prince, for our priest Michael, our rector Don, our deacon Lucy, for, uh, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. In our prayer list in the parish, that includes Elaine Betty, Faye Bird, Donna DiPilato, Alice Eddy, Bonnie Franco, Meredith Fries, the Gandell family, Carl Hyde Knudsen, Ruth Johns, Rosa Johnston should be on here. Rudy Scherf, Dara Smith. Pray for those in any name or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find <clears throat> and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially the victims of the recent mass killings and the war homicides in Rochester, and everybody in this troubled world. Pray for those who have died. If you would like to add any prayers in your heart or aloud, I ask your prayers for those 
and I invite you to offer thanksgivings. Thanksgivings for birthdays. On March 29th, Crystal, the daughter of Bob Greek, is having a birthday. And on April 3rd, Stacy Elmack is having a birthday. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with, you. with you. In our announcements, this morning, we have, um, we're heading into Holy Week, and there will be a, the Monday, Thursday observation will be on Zoom, and you can get the address of that through uh, the church office. Uh, I suppose I should have checked in here and see if it's already in uh, the bulletin. As with the uh, Monday, Thursday, 7 p.m. on Zoom, and Good Friday, noon on Friday, also on Zoom. So we will be a little bit distanced, but we will be observing those important things of Holy Week that I talked about earlier. Easter Sunday, we will be meeting in person. Unfortunately, not here in the uh, church proper because of some uh, construction issues, but we will have a Easter Sunday service in the, uh, in the Great Hall down below. It will be very simple, uh, but, and because of the continued concerns of the COVID infection, and the size of the space below, it will unfortunately have to be by reservation. So please call the church office if you wish to attend, and we will be also coming to you uh, over the ethernet, so uh, if you can't make it in person, or if you don't feel that it's safe for you yet, we encourage you, I encourage you, to, to stay away for a little bit longer. Uh, are there any other announcements that we need to, uh, to make today? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in an offering and sacrifice to God.
page 361 of your prayer books. We will say the doxology together. But first, let, let, me, um, let me mention, please, uh, uh, page 17 of your bulletin, the Zoom address for the Thursday and Friday services are in the bulletin. Uh, forgive me for not checking that ahead of time. Let's say the doxology together. Praise, Praise God, God, from, from whom, whom all blessings, all blessings flow. flow. Praise, Praise Him, God, all creatures, creatures here, below. here below. Praise, Praise Him, God, above ye heavenly hosts. Host. Praise, Praise Father, God, Son, Son, and Holy, and Holy Ghost. Ghost. On page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give, give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining with our voices, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ has risen, risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us, us keep the feast. feast. the gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Concluding prayer is on page 366 of your prayer books, or page 15 of the bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage through love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Now let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.